So a while ago, I made a video that went over the perfect diet. At least it was perfect from my perspective. It was easy to follow, pretty cheap. It had a good base calorie amount. Protein quality was great. It had tasty foods. And most importantly, and most underratedly, if that's even a word, it covered the requirements of every single vitamin and mineral. Unless you've had a diet plan written by Stan Efforting, chances are any meals you've purchased by any online fitness influencers don't cover these needs. Now, they're called essential vitamins and minerals for a reason, because your body cannot produce enough of these itself. Hence why you need to ingest these nutrients via food. Once you change your diet to include all of these nutrients, you'll find you have way more energy once you have all of these in your diet. When I was in university, I wasn't aware of the whole concept of having a diet that contains every vitamin and mineral. Although I was likely hitting a lot of them, I definitely wasn't hitting all of them. Off my head, I likely wasn't hitting vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, potassium, and probably magnesium, and probably others too. I got close to hitting all of these foods once I found the vertical diet from Stan Efforting, but I wasn't hitting everything until I made my own modifications to my own diet. I did grab a lot of inspiration from the vertical diet, but this diet is quite different from that. So before I go into the meals you need, here is a list of other stipulations involved in this diet. What I mean by this is when I list the meals, I'll be more so mentioning why they're important in the sense of the vitamins and minerals they provide. I will briefly touch on these factors near the end of the video, but there is more to this diet structure rather than just, oh, this meal hits these minerals, this meal hits these minerals, done. Easy. There's other factors like LDL cholesterol, omega-3s, protein timing, protein quality, nutrient combinations, a lack of seed oils, etc. that play into this diet. But if I do go into all of this, it'll be another long video, and no one seems to like that. So do your own homework on this stuff if you want more, but there's a rhyme and reason to the structure of this. Also, this suits my lifestyle and responsibilities. Example, my morning tea doesn't involve a cooked meal. Maybe you are in a position where you're able to have a cooked meal for your first, well, meal of the day. Maybe you have more time to cook than me. Maybe you work from home, you lucky bastard. Maybe you work night shifts. I can't cover every person's situation, but this works for me, and it's likely a much better and more thought out diet than most others out there. And guess what? This is free. You're welcome. So let's get into it. Meal one, seaweed and tuna. So my first meal for the day is a can of tuna and seaweed. Spring water tuna more specifically, since tuna that is smoked or in olive oil contains high amounts of fat, which is unnecessary calories for the purpose of this diet. The lower the total calorie amount, the better, since it can be applicable to more people and you can add in more calories from other foods elsewhere if your basal metabolic rate or total daily energy expenditure is high enough. So, we also have tuna due to the protein content. I use a 185 gram can, which equates to around 28 grams of protein after it's been drained. Choose whichever can size works for you in your region that's close enough to 30 grams of protein. I've talked about mercury in tuna before, but you don't need to worry about it. You're not spam eating tuna, and there's selenium in tuna, which helps counter the mercury. Again, as mentioned, if you want more information, suss it for yourself, as I'm trying to keep this short. It'll still probably be like 25 to 30 minutes, though. Tuna is the only source of fluoride in this diet, too. I've spoken with my dentist on this, and she said you... You only really need fluoride for the sake of your toothpaste. There's conspiracy theories that they say, oh, they put fluoride in tap water to poison us. I have tank water because we live in the middle of nowhere, so no tap water for us. But either way, we have fluoride in this diet just in case. But if you don't have fluoride in your diet, don't fret since it's mostly important for your teeth. Hence why toothpaste has this. We also have seaweed as one of our only two iodine sources. Many people are deficient in iodine, which isn't surprising since barely any common foods contain iodine. I have these two foods together as you may still feel hungry after the tuna, so the seaweed helps add a little bit more volume to the meal. 
Now, note you can add some extra food here, such as rice, for example, to help bump up some calories, or you could add potatoes or other foods, but I am outlining the most basic essential diet. You can add in foods on top of these meals, but the tuna and seaweed is essential. Rice in this situation would not be essential. Meal two, red meat, sweet potato, kiwi, and dark chocolate, and iodized table salt. My second meal, or my lunch, contains a red meat sauce. We pick red meat since red meat contains many vitamins and minerals that foods like tuna and chicken don't contain much of, such as B vitamins and zinc. I choose kangaroo. I live in Australia, so this is easy to obtain. I doubt it's easy in other countries, but beef is a popular red meat. I have this myself whenever I'm feeling lax on the calories. It's just that currently I'm trying to keep it tight and lean, like my body and my calorie count. At an easy spot to keep calories low is my choice of red meat. You can opt for extra lean sources of beef here in Australia, but they get quite expensive. I'm also an accountant as well as a gym rat, so I need to balance the two. The accountant in me wouldn't be very happy with my grocery bill if I kept having expensive extra lean beef. I also have iodized table salt with red meat for extra flavor, sodium, and iodine. I also use smoky barbecue sauce to add some flavor. Not the most ideal thing in the world, but the best diet is the one you'll follow. I'd be less keen for this meal if I didn't have the smoky barbecue sauce. Now, as for other lean red meat sauces, rabbit is also pretty lean too. Not sure how available that is in your area, but you're going to have to suss your own country. But if you're a fellow Aussie like me, give kangaroo a try. If not, you might just have to fork out the extra dough for extra lean beef. Or you could just have high calorie beef if that's what floats your boat. But the red meat is the most important part here. I have sweet potato over regular white potato purely for the extra vitamin A. Both potatoes are good sources of potassium and a nice carb source. But sweet potato has vitamin A, hence its orange color. Now, if you have too much white potato, you can run into issues with resistant starches, but that's not normally an issue for most people. If you're on the biggest clean bulk ever, or are a world record power lifter, you might need to be wary of this. But for most people, I doubt you'd be eating enough potatoes for this to be a problem. Also, don't worry about the glycemic index. Some people say they pick sweet potato because it has a slow release of carbs whereas white potatoes have a quick release of carbs. Maybe look at this if you have diabetes, but from what I know, the glycemic index goes out the window if you combine carbs with proteins and fats, which most meals do. Either way, doesn't affect me, and that's all I'll say for the sake of keeping this video short. I have kiwi alongside this meal instead of any other time, since vitamin C helps iron absorption, and we're having iron due to our red meat. I don't have kiwi in meal one as tuna doesn't contain as much iron as red meat and I don't have kiwi with my last meal of the day since it's too close to bedtime to be having any more water than I usually do since kiwi obviously is full of water hence why it's a good source of vitamin C since vitamin C is water soluble. I have dark chocolate 95% cocoa the more cocoa the better since that's where all the nutrients are. Dark chocolate can be quite expensive, so what I do is I sign up for the supermarket rewards program app thing. Here in Australia, you have Everyday Rewards, which is the Woolworths equivalent. The other major supermarket here is called Coles. I'm not sure what their equivalent is, but I work for Woolworths, so we're arch rivals of Coles, so I'm not going to give them any free advertising. Go to Woolies. So anyway, this Woolworths rewards thing, it shows you specials for items you usually buy. Once you see Lint Dark Chocolate for 50% off, just go and spam by this. At least, I assume this app is available for customers. I work there, as mentioned, so other than my staff discounts, I'm not sure what people who don't work there have access to that I also have access to. Either way, I have the 95% cocoa. It's an acquired taste, I'll admit. I used to hate dark chocolate, but you get used to it. And it goes quite well after red meat, sweet potato, and kiwi. So other than that taste for dark chocolate, potassium, sodium, magnesium pair well together. You have the potassium from the sweet potato, sodium from the iodized table salt with the red meat, and now you have magnesium from the dark chocolate. Additionally, copper and zinc can neutralize each other. Too much of one can lead to a deficiency in the other. 
So we ensure we have adequate amounts of both. So we have the zinc from the red meat and copper from the dark chocolate. This is less important than the other example, but it's still a good idea to combine the two. Meal three, protein shake with milk. Whether you pick full cream, light or skim milk depends on your caloric needs, but I choose light since I get that for free from both of my jobs and they don't really have skim milk, but the supermarket has skim milk, but it's a little bit inconvenient to get this written off as store use, but either way, I have light milk. It's free from both of my jobs. And again, I'm keeping the calories tight to keep the physique tight. So cutting calories, you can do this by cutting from full cream to light milk. The purpose of this protein shake is it's an easy way to ingest protein and calories while driving, since I have my protein shake on my way to the gym. My reasons for this have been elaborated before. So if you have about 700 mils of milk with a scoop of protein powder, this is an easy 40-ish grams of protein. Good to get those numbers up. Milk also contains a lot of nutrients that helps us hit our total vitamin and mineral goals. Meal four, six eggs, spinach, honey, white rice, and butter. So this is my dinner most nights, unless it's Sunday, because my work hours are different Sunday as shown in this video and unless I go out for dinner. So most nights, this is my dinner. We have six egg yolks, since egg yolks contain so many nutrients, the more yolks the better. No, this isn't bad for your cholesterol unless you're genetically susceptible to this. Cholesterol being bad for you is a pervasive myth started by Ansel Keys. Again, Google it if you care to know more. Having six eggs also gives us around 30 grams of protein. So this is another good bump to that total protein intake figure. I cook the eggs in butter since it's not a seed oil, unlike most other cooking oils. You can use cold pressed oils such as coconut or extra virgin olive oil that haven't been refined and exposed to hexane, but again, Google it. Or chat GPT it, I don't care, I'm not your dad. But I pick butter since I prefer it, and there's even a sneaky amount of nutrients in butter, and it makes the eggs taste better. I'll cop the extra 5 grams of fat, 45 calories for better tasting eggs. It's a nice reward at the end of the hard day of work, gym, stock market, and study slash online brand, or whatever it is I do that day. Either way, it's like my little treat. Spinach goes well with dinner time since this is the only meal I eat at home on a normal day, and I'd prefer not to microwave spinach at work. Yeah, I literally just chuck spinach in a bowl and microwave it. You can mix it with the eggs, but personally I find it ruins the egg's flavor. I just shovel warm spinach down my throat with some water and get it over with. Spinach is another great source of many vitamins and minerals, and it's also basically no calories, so it's good for keeping your calories down. Pretty easy to slot this into any diet. Honey is a majorly underrated food, although I don't actually see any nutritional information regarding the vitamins and minerals it contains. I have seen its benefits in terms of antioxidants, which are hard to measure since it requires tests and whatnot. Not feasible if you're like most people. And most of us are too lazy to even get our own blood work done. So if we're too lazy for that, then we're likely too lazy to get our antioxidants tested. Eric Bugenhagen has also talked about honey as a source of pre-workout or energy in general. So there's that. If I had more calories to work with, I'd probably have a bottle of honey in my bag and just pour some in my mouth an hour before gym. I have this with eggs. One of my friends said this was weird, and my brother said that as well. I never thought of it this way, eggs and honey being weird, but honey does go well with eggs, in my opinion at least. If you don't think so, then just use some tomato sauce or whatever with the eggs, and then just have the honey on its own. White rice is picked over brown because white rice is more easily digested than brown rice, for most people anyway, and also I just prefer it. Again, the best diet is the one you'll follow. I'm always keen for some rice and butter after a long day. Oh yeah, I also have butter with this rice, as well as more iodized table salt. Now, I found if you have a carb source that contains fiber, such as cereal this close to bed, aka under two hours before sleep time, I tend to wake up to urinate every single time. Obviously, fiber helps you take a shit, go number two. I haven't found anything about it making you need to pee, go number one more often, but other than that, frequent urination is apparently a sign of fiber deficiency, but I found high fiber sources like cereal close to bedtime makes me wake up to pee, disrupting my sleep, 
and often I can't get back to sleep afterwards, so I avoid high fibre before bed. Spinach has some fibre, but it's not that much compared to cereals. It could also have to do with milk, because obviously I don't have dry cereal, but I doubt 150 mils of milk within two hours of bed makes that sort of difference. I have a lot more water than that with my dinner, so I just play it safe and stay away from high fibre. So alongside this dinner, you should also have a vitamin D3 supplement alongside a shot of wheat germ oil. The reason you have these with this specific meal is that vitamin D3, K2 and calcium pair well together. Outside the scope of this video, but K2 is needed to help calcium absorption into your bones rather than certain tissues, which can cause some problems, hence why you need K2 and D3. So having the D3 tablets here combined with the K2 from the egg yolk. Spinach has vitamin K, but it's K1, not K2. But regardless, we have the K2 from eggs to combine with the vitamin D3. As for the wheat germ oil, this is one of the best sources of vitamin E. Wheat germ is high in fat, and vitamin E is fat soluble. Nature's foods often come with the cofactors required for optimal absorption, such as mentioned before with the kiwi. So you have vitamin E alongside eggs and spinach, as vitamin E and vitamin K pair well together. So vitamin K from eggs and spinach, vitamin E from the wheat germ oil. Now, a fifth meal can involve a bowl of cereal, as outlined in my original Perfect Diet video. Since the cereal, more so the grain, contains some nutrients and the added milk helps with the nutrient count too, as well as extra protein. It's excluded from this video here since excluding it brings down the total calorie count so this diet becomes more applicable to more people. And of all the meals here, the cereal is the least important in my opinion, as the tuna and seaweed is an underrated combination and you can't make up for that lost protein unless you have way more milk and cereal than normal, which would stack up your calorie count, meaning this diet would exclude more people. You could also have this cereal in the morning if you want extra calories, and if you have time, I prefer to just get in some extra sleep, since we all know sleep is super important. Some people talk about grains being bad, fiber not being necessary, and the whole carnivore diet thing. I'll mention it if this video does well enough, like I'll mention it in another video, or I'll mention it if there's enough interest in the comments section. But personally, I would never have a carnivore diet unless it's for medical reasons, since I simply just enjoy other foods too much, even though a heavy majority of my calories come from foods that would be considered under the carnivore diet. But regardless, there's a good amount of fiber in this diet from the cocoa, from the dark chocolate, the sweet potato, the kiwi, and the spinach. I've heard in the carnivore diet community, specifically from Dr. Paul Celadino, that fiber isn't necessary, since there's no fiber in any animal products, as far as I know. Fiber is only in fruits and vegetables. And fiber is necessary as it binds to minerals, both good and bad, and flushes them out of your body. But if you have too much fiber, you shit as if you have diarrhea, and it can flush out good minerals too. In fact, if your pee is clear, sometimes this isn't a good thing, as the yellow color in your pee shows you're excreting waste products. If your pee is clear, Yes, you're hydrated, and yes, maybe you have no waste products, but it can also mean you've flushed out all the good minerals too. That's a whole topic in itself. Search it for yourself, or let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about it more, but there's reasons as to why we don't have too much fiber in this diet. 10 to 15 grams of fiber per 1,000 calories is generally a good range. We're under this if you don't have the cereal. If you do have the cereal, you hit this range. Maybe you go slightly over, but then an argument can be made that you don't need fiber. So I've met these arguments halfway with not having too much fiber, but still having some. Even cholesterol particles are flushed out with fiber, which obviously helps your cholesterol levels, but that's enough talk about fiber. So I've just mentioned the reasons why I've picked the fiber amount I have here. Again, I could talk for ages regarding both sides of the argument, but I'm keeping this brief for the sake of video time. But lastly, I'll talk about a few other reasons as to why I picked the foods that I have. For starters, we don't have a vegan diet here because as ethical and moral as it is, it's simply just not the best diet for you as a human. Vegan diets lack a lot of nutrients like B12 and iron, for example. Yes, some grains and whatnot have iron in it, but this iron isn't in the most absorbable form. And there's also other reasons, but basically a vegan diet isn't the most optimal. The literature is clear on this. So don't shoot the messenger. Or, I mean, feel free to leave angry comments in the comment section below since it helps engagement. 
The spacing of these meals takes protein timing into consideration. Although it's not integral to space out protein intake, it does help. Total intake and quality is the most important, but it doesn't hurt to space out protein intake. It's also more practical. Like, are you going to try and have six eggs, a protein shake, and a can of tuna in the same meal? I don't think so. Some hardcore intermittent fasters may do this, but for most people, having more balanced, spaced out meals works best. Your body can only utilize amino acids that are readily available in the bloodstream, similar with fiber, hence why they're spaced out too. Total intake is most important, but spacing these out definitely helps. Your body can store adipose tissue and glucose, aka fats and carbs, but it can't do the same with amino acids, aka protein. Taking omega-3 and omega-6 supplements works too, since it's hard to get the omega balance right via diet without going way over in calories or having too much of a certain food. Omega-9s aren't essential since your body can produce this, as in like they're not essential to have omega-9 tablets because your, your body can take care of this. Cholesterol is mainly genetic dependent. Don't fret about the amount of egg yolks consumed. About 10 to 15% of people, or at least 10 to 15% last time I looked at the statistics, have genetic issues that can cause cholesterol problems. So having high cholesterol foods like egg yolks can cause issues for these people. Do your own research. The cholesterol myth started with Ansel Keys. So start there. No cooking in vegetable oil, no olive oil. Yes, olive oil is bad. It's processed with hexane. Still have no idea why so many people think olive oils are healthy fats. No canola oil, no sunflower oil, just cooking with butter. Sounds funny that butter is a healthier cooking alternative, but again, if you don't believe me, do your own homework. If I defended everything I've said in this video with data, I'd have another video as long as the video that no one else wants to watch, aka my perfect diet video. Majority of the benefits from fasting occur from longer than two day fasts, and autophagy isn't the magical phenomenon people think it is. If it's worked for you, that's fantastic, and it's worth a try if you have some health problems that are unresolved. It kind of makes sense from a human development perspective, as cavemen likely went days without food at a time, but for me, I'd get too hungry, and I have too much on to focus on an empty stomach. Some people think fasting helps brain fog. It doesn't help me, but to each their own. Lastly, a new channel on the block called Talon Fitness does stuff like this if you want further information but he basically goes over other nutritional information such as, oh, artichoke contains bile, which is good for you in this way. Well, bile is naturally excreted in your liver anyway, so although stuff like this is useful, your body can produce it already. My diet contains stuff your body, for the most part, cannot produce naturally. Hence why I've focused on the vitamins, minerals, protein timing, and stuff like that. Everything else, like antioxidants, for example, your body can do itself. So having blueberries because of their powerful antioxidants is not included here since, well, your body can already do that stuff itself. But your body cannot produce calcium itself, hence why we need it in this diet. So by all means, check out his nutritional videos. However, I feel like they're more applicable to like nutrition or medical students. Focusing on stuff like antioxidants would only be applicable if you're trying to be a top percentage pro athlete or if you're becoming a higher level medical professional. But even in the athlete example, your genetics matter more anyway. In the Last Dance documentary, we saw Michael Jordan eat a pizza during the finals and he got food poisoning. But regardless of his food poisoning, he still had a pizza during the finals. He wasn't like, oh, let's get 56 grams of blueberries for antioxidants and optimal sucrose absorption alongside orange juice for further energy, for example. No, he didn't care. Because honestly, most of that extra nitty gritty stuff doesn't matter. All of that is to say, this diet is more than enough for most people. Feel free to search further and look into this stuff and have other foods if you wish. Your diet is your own, but my argument is, what I provided you is more than necessary. Anything extra probably isn't going to make any huge impacts on your fitness, energy levels, aesthetics, whatever. It might if you have medical issues. But obviously, I am not your medical professional, so if you try out these foods and it still doesn't fix any issues you have, best to consult with your medical professional. And I'm not sure if I made it clear or not yet, but this is like a good base diet to have. There's probably around like 2,000 calories if you have these foods in the quantities that I have them. 
most people will need more food than that. So this is where you stack on other foods on top of these meals. Chances are you're not going to completely screw up the mineral intake. Like I said, copper and zinc sort of cancel each other out earlier. So chances are whatever food you have isn't going to be too high in copper where it cancels out the zinc we're having or vice versa. But again, I can't cover a diet that'll cover absolutely everyone, but just try these four here, add them into your diet, then have whatever other foods you have around this. Obviously don't just incorporate this food onto your current diet already because you'll be way over your calorie intake, but instead of having your general chicken and potatoes for dinner, for example, maybe try having the eggs and spinach or having the red meat, sweet potato, kiwi and dark chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Have these four meals as your base diet and then have like a couple of extra meals. Try this for a few weeks and see how your energy levels pick up. And obviously with higher energy, it helps all your other stats, helps your study, helps your work, helps you be able to do extra shifts at work, for example, helps your levels in the gym, helps you feel better in general. So no harm in trying it out. I seriously doubt this is going to cause any sort of problems for you unless you're like, you know, part of the people who are genetically prone to having cholesterol issues. But like I said, if you've got any sort of health problems, go check with a professional first. So this was the four or five simple meals you need to hit your vitamin and mineral intake. Every single food has multiple reasons as to why it's included in this diet, as well as the reasoning for having each food with each meal. Try incorporating these four to five meals into your diet and see how your energy levels change in the coming weeks and let me know how it goes for you. Thanks for watching. That is all.